Everyone, okay, we're back today with another episode, and this time on encoder, decoder, multi-head attention. So, so far we've looked at the mask multi-head attention from the decoder, and the next sub-layer in the decoder layer is this encoder, decoder, multi-head attention. So why do we do this? Well, we're working with a sequence-to-sequence -sequence architecture or an encoder, decoder architecture. We have some input and we get an encoded representation of this input. And from this encoded representation, we want to decode you know, whatever our target actually is. And every time we're decoding a token, we need to know which one of the encoded words we should look at to decode that token. And this is done in the encoded decoder multi-head attention step for the transformer. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the key and value tensors from the last encoder layer, and we're going to send them to all the decoder layers. Okay, so the query comes from the current decoder layer, and the key and the value comes from the last encoder layer from our encoder stack. Okay, so we're going to jump into code into a second, but in this lesson, we're going to um, cover the encoder decoder architect uh, multi head attention, the decoder class, and the whole uh, sorry, the decoder layer class, and the whole decoder stack. Okay, let's jump into it. Whoops, where are we? We're here. Okay, right. cool. So we've, we've already seen our, our multi-head attention class, and I think I pointed out in one of the previous videos um, that we have, we have this distinction that we feed in the inputs as pre-Q, pre-K, and pre-V. And the reason we do that is because of this uh, encoder, decoder, uh, multi-head attention. Okay, so as I mentioned, K and V are going to come from the last layer of the encoder, and Q is going to come from the from the current layer of the decoder. Okay. So, if we take a look at the decoder layer, let's run through this in its entirety. Okay. Uh, let me just bring up the diagram as well, so um, you guys have something to look at while we while we run through this. Okay, cool. So um, we've seen this mass multi-head self-attention and residual layer norm, and let's take a look at it in, in the code. So we've got this MHA1, which is going to be our mass multi-head self-attention, and let's just rename this so it's uh, slightly, slightly friendlier. Okay, and we have a residual and layer normalization specifically for, for this um, masks MHA and our second one is going to be encoder decoder MHA okay and we have a residual layer norm for, for this as well and finally we have a position wise feed forward and we have a residual layer norm for that as well and that is this norm 3 and self.ff on line 16 so these two okay a diagram shows key and value tensors coming into the encoder, decoder, multi-head attention. So we're currently in one decoder layer. So what we have to do is we have to send the encoder outputs into uh, into our uh, sorry into our encoder, decoder, multi-head attention. Okay. So we have our whole tensor of encoder outputs, and these are going to form the keys and the values in our multi-head attention step. Okay, so let's take a look at the shapes that this is coming in, and we'll take a look at how we run mass multi head attention and then how we run encoder decoder multi head attention. Okay, so we have our, um, our X, which is going to be our current input so far for the decoder. So this is going to be, um, and, and during training, this is our whole sequence length, if you remember, our whole target sequence length, and we use a mask to mask out all the illegal future positions. So here in X, we're going to have um, batch times the target sequence length times the model dimensionality. So an input to this decoder layer is already going to be encoded by the embeddings and the positional encoding. And our encoder outputs are coming from our encoder. And let me just bring that up so we can, we can remind ourselves. So we had this for loop over our encoder layers and we have this uh, tensor here of the encoding, which is batch times source sequence length times D. And this gets fed into the, into the encoder, decoder, multi-head attention. 
and this is this encoder outputs variable here of batch times source sequence length times D. So the reason we have this distinction between source and target sequence length is obviously because uh, two sentences when they're translated, they might not be the same length, or chances are they probably won't be the same length. Okay, so to our mass multi-head self-attention, we're feeding in just the X's. And we mask out uh, all the illegal tokens, and this, this is... Uh, the masking takes place in our scale dot product attention function inside of our um, inside of our multi head attention class. Okay, we output our mass multi head attention and we feed that through a layer normalization, a residual layer normalization, along with X. And then to then we run the encoder decoder multi head attention. Okay, so if we take a look back at the function. This, the, the first argument is queries, the second is uh, keys, and the third is values. So to our, to our queries, we're feeding in the, 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 the target side of things. So we feed in norm one, and then we feed in encoder outputs as um, pre-k and encoder outputs as pre-v. Now here we have a mask in the, in the next video, or in, in the video where we look at the transformer as a whole, we'll talk a bit more about the source mask. But just at a high level, and how we compose it, just at a high level, this is just um, a padding mask, right? So this just indicates, hey, look, uh, this will be true where there's padding, and it'll be false where we don't have padding and when we have legal inputs. And this just allows for, when we run the positional encoding, for it not to inject information, or for the information it injects into the, uh, into the well, into what should be the padding the, the, the padding part of the tensor, it allows us to mask it out and say, actually, you know, for all intents and purposes, this doesn't really exist and you don't need to look at this to, to make any, um, any judgments about what the source sentence actually should, the information the source sentence contains at this point in time. Okay, so as our outputs, we have our encoder, decoder, multi-head attention. And what we do is we feed it into the second residual layer normalization. So we feed in norm one as the residual and the encoder decoder multi-head attention as the main X. And then we run our position wise feed forward network, run, an, run a second, run a third residual layer normalization and we return all three. And actually using it in the decoder is basically the same as using it in the encoder. So I've run, I've run through all of this in the encoder. Let me just very quickly gloss over it. We have our embedding layer coming in, which we've initialized in the transformer class that we'll look at in a future video. Um, nothing special about it. We could have we could have just initialized it here as well, to be honest. Um, then we have our positional encoding. We have a dropout, and we have our importantly we have our list of decoders. Okay, so we pass in a num layers argument, and we initialize decoders inside of or decoder layers inside of this module list. Okay. So in our in our forward method, we're going to be feeding in X, which is going to be the the raw tokenized inputs of um, batch times target sequence length. So we haven't embedded this yet. That's what lines thirty and thirty one actually do. What else? We're we're also feeding in the encoder outputs. So the encoder will run first, then we'll get the outputs of that, and we'll feed them into the decoder and the target mask and the source mask and we'll look at how to create these in a future video so we embed the we we embed the uh, the inputs the target inputs and we encode them with positional encoding and then as we did with the encoder we just loop over all of our decoder layers um, passing in the or recursively passing in the encoding alongside the encoder output the target mask and the source mask okay and our output is batch times target sequence length times model dimensionality now, what we do is in the transformer layer, um, and I'll just show you this real quick, but we'll take a deeper dive into it um, in, in the next video, I think. Uh, what we'll do is we're going to feed the decoder outputs through a linear layer, and these will be our logits, which we then use to, to perform our uh, actual classification of which word or which token we should, we should be uh, outputting at for the current time step. Anyway, that's the that's the decoder, that's encoder, decoder, multi-head attention, that's the decoder layer as well. Um, hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.